poured in a particular context. It is not poured when people are divided. The Spirit of God is not poured just like that. The Bible says they were together in one place. The Bible encourages us that we should not give up the meeting together as it's a habit of some. So the Bible is encouraging us to come together because it is in a place of togetherness that God releases his spirit and his ability on us. And then it is a place where we encourage one another while it is called day. How do you know somebody loves you? I've been away for the last one week. And uh, is it on Friday? No, on Friday. I was sitting with my wife, fellowshipping with her, spending some time with her in the back office. And my wife was trying to tell me, we just need to get out. Just, it's about 8 o'clock, and she's telling me, so you told me to eat you in the peleke peleke inji. And I was really resisting. So I realized I've spent a whole week, I've not been in her. Why don't I just listen to her? So, let me just get you out, I'll drive you out. But with an excuse, I was trying to also to go to Frank's place. So I talked to Frank and asked him, Do you have my stuff? I want to come and collect my stuff. So, but you see, I did that when you love somebody, you sacrifice. When you love somebody, you sacrifice. So that is what I'm trying to talk today about. You will know somebody loves you because of the sacrifices they're making towards you. The relationship that I have with my wife, I love her whether she behaves the way I want her to behave or not. My love for her is that I am committed to her. I am committed. I am committed to love her. It is a commitment. That is the same way God has shown that he loves us. God shows that he loves us because of commitment. He's committed to us. Whether we are coming for things or whether we are not committed to him, the thing is, God is committed to you. As pastors of the church, we are committed. As leadership of the church, we are committed. Our work is to commit. It is not to give excuses. This one is like this, this one. No, 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 no. You have to have the love of the Father and commit yourself to loving God's people. To loving God, to, to love to do the work of God, you have to be committed. If you're getting into a relationship, you have to be committed to that relationship. Whether the people behave the way you want them to behave, no. It is not, it is not, it is not about how if they are going to behave right, that's how you're going to show them love. No. You commit yourself, whether they are negative or positive. So you commit yourself. Did you get the scriptures 314 second? 314. This is the scripture I began with the, the ear. When uh, the prophet is asking, is it a hard thing? The thing that the thing that he wants to do is a simple thing. These are men who are thirsty. They are looking for water. They're looking for water. Thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that you and your cattle and your animals may drink. Then there's a place where it says, during the time of the sacrifice, is it? Okay, go, go down a little bit. And now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by way of Edom and the land was filled with water. Uh, Timothy, my son, 
go to the place where down where it says about uh, where it says uh, and the king of Moab sacrificed his son there's a greater sacrifice there's a sacrifice of the son sacrifice of the son And the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him. He took him 700 men who drew swords to break through the kings of Edom, but they could not. Uh -huh. Then he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was a great indignation against Israel. God had delivered the victory to the children of Israel. But based on what God had given them, the victory that God had given them, they did not respond back in terms of sacrifice towards their God. In Malachi, God is complaining. In Malachi, God is complaining. You say that you come to worship me. But when you worship me, you come with blind sacrifices. You come with things that you come with things that don't show your respect and honor before me. When you love, when if you want to know somebody loves you, look at the sacrifice. This man took his, the life of his own. It, is, it was a greater sacrifice for him. But it says that even God, even because, even be, by the way that God had given them the victory, because God had given them the victory, but because of this sacrifice, it has nothing to do with the, it has nothing to do with the, with the way we are supposed to, but Sacrificing his own son on the walls prevented the Israel from breaking through the Moab, the, the, Moab, the Moab ranks. They were going to battle with the victory of God, but they do not know how to sacrifice before God. We ought to be a people in a community like this who know how to worship God, but also demonstrate it in the way that we give sacrifices before God and the way we relate with God because even Gandhi said there's no religion you cannot practice religion without giving without sacrifice there's no, re there's no religion without sacrifice those are Gandhi's words I was reading Arakovi's book on the principles of uh, on principles of Gandhi and one of the principles of Gandhi is the, chapter, uh, the sixth one. He talks about you cannot practice religion without sacrifice. Two men in Genesis bring sacrifices. There is a law of first mention. Two people bring sacrifices. One person, Cain, brings a particular sacrifice. And uh, Abel brings another sacrifice. One sacrifice is not accepted. The other one is accepted. Cain is a tiller of the ground. What does it mean to till from the ground? To till from the ground is to depend on emotions and things like that. Things that are natural. You till from the ground. You are a natural. When you're relating to people, you are so natural in the way you relate with them. So you do not offer to God sacrifice. You will read, I don't have time to explain, but when you buy me coffee, I'll, I'll explain. Uh, there is a, there is a, when you look at the Hebrews, uh, yeah, when you look at the Hebrews, what they do, we don't understand how they write. They write from right to left. When you see the things of God, there's a principles of the things of God. The things of God come from the right 
to invade the light, the, the light from the left. They say in psychology, the left, if somebody is left-sided, the person is linear, is logical, is yani to math, eh, it's, it's analytical, it's math, mathematical, data-oriented, and things like that. But somebody from the right side, somebody from the right side is somebody who is imaginative, creative. There's no, there's no limit of the, of the person who now uses the right, the right side. So, if you read Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25 talks about the parable of the, the parable of the goats and the sheep. The sheep are on the right side. The goats are on the left side. It's a very strong parable. The Bible says that he shall tell the goats to go on the left. The, the, the sheep will be taken to the right side and the goats will be taken. It's unless you are enlightened, you cannot, you can just see that it's left and right. It's, 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 it has nothing. You see uh, the patriarchs blessing their children and they switching hands. You wonder why, what, what are they doing? But it's, it's symbolism of right versus left. It's the invasion of the spirit side. The spirit side invading the logical side. The parable of the sheep and the goats. He will tell the goats to go on the left and he will tell what what is the characteristic of goats is that they are stubborn very stubborn they are very stubborn the sheep are meek humble. so there is something God is trying to communicate to us so these two people bring sacrifices before God one is from the ground the other one is from is is from the spirit he brings sheep the other one is a tiller of the ground. When Adam fell, they said that you, from the ground you came, and from the ground you shall return. So there's, there's a lesson here. How do you know somebody loves you? It's a sacrifice. And the way God shows us that he loves us is that he gave his only begotten son. To, we call that agape love. The Greeks have divided that kind of love. They've divided it almost into eight, eight stages of love. How almost eight there's torture, there's failure, there's errors, there's some they, some of them you can you can remind me. But they're different kind of love. But the love that comes from God is the agape love. Agape. So even as we come to God and offer sacrifices to him this morning. How do we demonstrate that we really love God? When we say that we love our spouse, is it that we are taking it from the, from the natural side? You do, then I'll do for you. Or it is sacrificial love that is demonstrated by God as Christ has demonstrated to us. Praise the Lord. So I told you I'm watching this series, Ready to Love. And I'm understanding a lot of things and understanding a lot of our psychology and stuff like that. So God is not that he's ready to love. God just loved us. God loves us. And he lays his life to us. So as a community, as a community of believers, one of the things that will bring us together, the Bible says that I pray that they may be one. I pray that they may be one. And being brought into oneness is a place where we understand that we, we have that love of God that, and that we can lay our lives before Him. There's no need of you, of you coming to a community like this and then when, when it's offering time or whatever offering you're giving, offering to God, the offering that you give is uh, some little pocket change and after this you're going to spend almost almost some ridiculous amount of money trying to entertain friends 
God knows you're bringing blind offerings to Him. So amongst our relationship, we know. So let us be encouraged. That is the sacrifices that we give. And God looks. Jesus sits at the, at the offering table. Not because of the offerings, no. It's not about offerings. It is us adapting the nature of Christ. Where we are able to lay down the lives, our lives to the lives of our brethren. When we talk about love, we have to be committed. We are committed to love. So I say it, I conclude by saying, when God pours out his spirit, he pours out his spirit in a community, in a community of people who come together, a community of people who come together to worship. One of the things you're, not, you're going to notice this year, you're going to notice a search of the move of God in this place. You begin to feel a mighty presence of God as you constantly come to this place because we're intentional. We're going to be committed. I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the sacrifice? So this year, I pray that we're going to take a step and be more serious with God. And let me tell you, God is going to be serious with you. And he's going to show himself strong on your behalf. You see your family flourishing. You will see a glory in your family. You see a glory in your name. So I told you about Cain. So you buy me tea this week. And I begin to tell you about the, the, the invasion of the right to the left side. It's a very interesting study. It's a very interesting study. I've taken my wife through a little bit here and there, trying to see whether she really understands. So slowly by slowly, we're getting there. So the Lord bless you. Uh, I don't know, Pastor uh, Anthony. Anthony, you're ready for, for us? Who is taking over? Can we all stand in the presence of God? <laughs>